For this video, we'll be using Zig's built-in test suite. Very briefly, tests are denoted with the keyword test, optionally followed by a name. The body goes inside its own block. Array types are declared by placing brackets with the number of elements inside followed by the type. Arrays have an implicit dot len property that returns the length of an array. If an array is declared as variable, elements can be modified by assigning a value using the bracket index notation. Indices start at zero in Zig. The length of an array can be inferred if the values are known at compile time by using an underscore. Arrays can be iterated by using a for loop with the capture syntax denoted by these pipes. In the case of arrays, there are two values that may be captured, the data itself and the current index. In this example, the value stored in item and the element accessed with the index are the same. However, the values are not stored in the same memory location. Item in this case is a copy of the data, so these pointers are different. We will cover pointers in depth in another video. To modify the data in the array while iterating, a pointer to the element can be exposed with this asterisk syntax. The data referenced to by a pointer can be modified and retrieved or dereferenced by using the dot star syntax as shown here. Sometimes it's required to initialize an entire array to a specific value. In this case, the array multiplication operator can be used. It's a double asterisk. The array multiplication operator can also be used to initialize an array with a pattern. Arrays can be concatenated using the concatenate operator, plus plus, provided their values are known at compile time. In Zig, named blocks can return values by using the break keyword. This allows the initialization of an array at compile time using a for loop in a block. A function can also be used to initialize an array as shown here. Multi-dimensional arrays work as you would expect. However, you must specify the size of the inner arrays. Arrays can be sentinel terminated. That means whatever value you put here after the colon will appear after the last element of an array. The sentinel does not add to the length of the array, but it can be queried. This may be useful if interoperating with a C library that requires a specific sentinel to mark the end of an array.